Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I want to get to the bottom of the second stage structural failure that we saw in a Nico 411 last time which happened around here and to that end I've created a new variant uh, Nico 411A which instead of having this attached to the Thor avion uh, what happened was we had uh, two Thor avionics packages at the bottom here I just moved them to the top of the stage there and then attach the engine directly to the tank. I've also decided not to clip this engine into the tank uh, so it's sort of sticking out like that and uh, we'll try this variant and see if that was the problem though previously I had uh, done the same arrangement with the Thor avionics units plenty of times without any problems occurring so that is the big question mark. Now it might be that it's just this engine that's to blame. Now you remember Previously, we had in 1.1.2 we had a problem with the with those engines from the Soviet engine pack not wanting to decouple. They just sort of uh, held on to the previous stage persistently. So, if that's the case, I've got a different variant. But let's uh, save this and build this one first. So here you can already see my other variant is the 621. And the reason you can see the two engines is because uh, it has the problem that I've been trying to avoid, which is if you attach this directly to another procedural tank, another procedural part, it tends to leave that gap whenever you open the file. But that's a, you know a minor problem compared to the whole thing disintegrating, right? So here, instead of it being attached to the engines at all, it is being attached directly to the tank and no throw avionics pack uh, units those are back up there we have to add a few extra because there's a 621 six engines on the bottom in order to make sure that this did not attach to an engine I had to put two engines here that required everything to be widened and since it's wider I had to put more engines on the first stage so it's like that it's still carrying the same payload though uh, it could probably carry more as you can see we've got way more than needed for orbit but we will uh, take care of that some other time we want to test our engines. So, I'm going to save this and build one of these. Alright, taking a look at our schedule, we'll move the 411A up and then the 621 up. After all, we can't actually build the 933, uh, sorry, 944 uh, until we upgrade the launch pad in 232 days anyway. We still have to take care of that maneuver node for the Uber Prober, the first Uber Prober and then we have to watch out for that as well but the 411A will be done before any of that. So we'll launch the 411A, deal with the maneuver for that probe, that's the mid-course adjustment, and then do the 621. What, whatever happens with the 411A, we'll do the 621. And then uh, we will bring our probe into Mars SOI. That's the early arriving probe. Uh, we don't need an Oliver 2 Nico Centaur actually. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, we have a lot of time for our flyby missions and all that. What we don't have a lot of time for is beating the Apollo mission to the moon. That's a little bit tight now. Okay, let's roll out Nico 411A. Alright, here we go again. Nope. Well, I, I guess we wanted to line up with the moon because these are fuel tanks. So we'll continue to do that. Okay, that's good enough. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Alright, off we go. So this one, the bottom is connected directly to the engine. No Thor avionics units between the engine and the second stage tank. Overall, through the first stage, there is very limited thrust to weight ratio. It's not going very fast. That's because it's lifting all of this up. You know, it's a very stubby first stage, which means it's not not really gaining in acceleration very much. That's also why I'm going a bit steeper. Now remember we're doing all this testing because the Nico 944 has to be able to potentially lift a Kerbal to space 
has to be Kerbal rated and everything. Very much in line with Prograde. Uh, we've lost an engine. The gimbling of the other three should be able to hold it. Well, see, this is why uh, we're testing it. We had a failure. Looking good on the remaining three, though. I guess we should keep a 40 degree pitch to compensate for the loss of thrust. Okay, separation. And ignition. Well, successful ignition of the second stage, so that's good. Maybe it was the Thor avionics units that were causing the problem. We'll see. Or maybe it was just a quirk because of running the system for a while. That can happen. Or maybe clipping the engine in. So many possibilities. The point is it's working right now. Not going particularly fast right now. Time to apoapsis is diminishing. But as far as thrust to weight ratios are concerned, well, the third stage is really bad off. We should probably hold a higher pitch to to make sure that has enough time. Okay, well, the uh, angle is harsh and time to apoapsis is pretty tight, but as far as delta V is concerned, we're still okay. Alright, set. And ignition. Yeah, with a seven and a half minute burn on this stage. I don't know if this is a good enough angle or time to apoapsis. At least it lit. 400 kilonewtons. But uh, look at that time to apoapsis tick down. And we're just barely in space right now. Delta V wise, we're fine, but it's just a matter of having the time to burn that delta V. So, I'm gonna be excessive about it since we've got the fuel, but not the TWR. It is a heavy load for the rocket. I mean, how much is it again? Uh, it's a 20 ton, basically, payload. I don't know. This, is, this isn't looking great, I'll tell you that. In terms of data units, though, we are getting those. Finally got to this stage. Okay, well, vertical speed is now not going negative further. It is now approaching zero again, which is good. We are going back into the atmosphere. We're below 140 kilometers and still... Uh, more than three minutes of burn time left. Delta V-wise, we're below what we need, but then again, we could use some of the payload zone fuel to like circularize or finish stuff off, so there's that. We could probably also flatten out a bit now. What we'll look to do is to have a uh, have this push us to uh, proper apoapsis and then circularize with this, or or whatever, or whatever. Whatever works. Okay, two minutes left in the stage, and we have basically bright level. Vertical speed is now above zero, and we're going up again. I'm gonna keep the pitch up a bit to make sure that uh, we actually get a good number on at least one side of this orbit. So it seems like I've misjudged the payload capacity of this particular launcher. Oh no, we have no connection. Well, that's going to make things difficult. Uh, well, I can't stage right now. Hmm. I really need this to finish its orbit within the next four minutes or so, but I can't do... I should have activated those commutrons. Um, yeah, that took so long that uh, we passed, well, let's see, there's apoapsis. 
looks like we're so low that we have no chance to get it get a line of communication here we've passed apoapsis well shucks so many things to communicate with I didn't get the antennae out in time well there goes that idea I mean it does have them just uh, didn't extend them this stage didn't have much Delta V to begin with uh, if we unlock the tanks we can do that apparently uh, 0.12 thrust to weight ratio not exactly meant for for serious work and it's not gonna be able to save itself now but our goal was to test the engines let's look on the bright side and we did that we'll be trying to bring basic well we'll be trying to bring, bring the exact same payload up on the 621 though having two fuel tanks is better than having one Yeah, I don't think much debris is going to be reaching the ground, people of Africa, so I think you're alright. Yep, it's all gone. Okay, well, let's uh, deal with that maneuver node and then the launch of the 621. Alright, here we are with our probe, uh, 52 minutes from the mid-course correction. It's still recharging just fine, so no problems there. This is not in time warp, after all, uh, in time warp. Uh, whoops, it goes into low power mode and that, that the recharge rate is even better. So, yes, our electric charge situation is very good indeed. And let's uh, get to the maneuver node. I have to remember that we have a three and a half minute delay. Okay, so uh, the fuel up here is locked. So it should be safe for me to use... Well, I think we have a small reaction wheel somewhere around, right? No, no I didn't, because those are expensive. Alright, RCS on. Ah, that'll take three minutes for the RCS to turn on. That's inconvenient. So much for planning. Okay, much RCS is happening. Throttling up. And activating the stage. And that'll take three minutes to shoot. <sighs> yeah, 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 uh, close alarm. You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Smart ASS is not good at this. Right. SAS is gonna take three minutes too. There we go. Finally. So somebody in the comments mentioned... I mean, there are two ways of doing this. One is the way I've got plotted here, which is make sure you try and hit Deimos and Phobos at the sending node on the opposite side. Uh, the other thing is to go to uh, keep your apoapsis really really high and then try and correct this 25 degrees when it's all the way out there. Um, this one is my preferred method because it actually takes less fuel and uh, and you know uh, well it just takes less fuel so that's why I like it. But it might be a little bit tricky to actually hit Deimos at that point because it's so small. Timing it might be a difficult thing. What you do to time it, by the way, is to lift the periapsis up, uh, go to apoapsis and then lift the periapsis up a little bit to try and time it. And as long as you have maneuver nodes, that should be doable. But Both ways work. Well, that's a pretty good match. Okay. Uh, it'll probably end up deviating a little bit because of residual RCS fire thanks to SAS, but I don't want to... I don't want to mess with that right now, and we need to reorient uh, so that our tail is to the sun anyway. Oh, actually, uh, our nose to the sun will be fine. And that'll change things. What we have plotted here is the burn at Mars, so we're not going to have too much Delta V left in the uh, asterisk stage. 
Okay, I think I'll have to take that and run. Otherwise, yeah, you can see how much it's trying to mess with it all on its own. As long as we're going the right way around and we have a periapsis, I better just take it. Okay, let's go back to Space Center. Oh, uh, hold on. We should add an alarm. All right. So the next thing is testing the Nico 621. Just getting more data on the engines, the NK-15, the NK-15V, and the NK-9V, of which many will be used on the Nico 944. As we saw with the first stage on Nico 411, as long as we have four engines, the other three, their gimbling should be able to t handle it if one of the engines goes out, so that's what we're hoping for. On the other hand, the TWR gets really messed up in that case, so we would still rather like it if engines didn't go out. As far as the launch pad is concerned, 179 days still. Maybe with the Nico 621 or some smaller rocket we can test some system out, like you know the way they launched the command module on the Saturn 1B, that kind of thing. Maybe we should use one of these small rockets to test out a capsule, though we haven't actually unlocked capsules yet. Second gen capsules, that's gonna be a while. Improved electrics. Uh, I think the improved, el why, why do we need improved electrics anyway? Let me check. Is there anything to do with the moon with improved electrics? It's mainly satellite dishes, right? Well, there are some lunar experiments, but mostly it's dishes. There are better solar panels. You know what? I I'm, oh, RTGs as well. It's all very good and all, but I think the second gen capsules might be the Gemini cabin is nice still no lander cabin though no lander can of any kind landing is over here but this these aren't crude landings this is the space exploration this has the lunar module I don't need a lunar module, I just need something a little bit niftier than what we've got. Yeah, maybe we should move up the second gen capsules as a priority. Just to get the Gemini capsule. Okay, up it goes. I mean, we've, we're, we're half done with improved electrics, but still a ways. I don't feel it's the priority here. Okay. Oh, um, stop warp. Uh, it looks like we actually have to take care. Oh, oh no, the Nico 9621 uh, is ready to be rolled out. Oh, I missed that. Okay, actually, we're going to have a probe approaching Mars before this finishes rolling out. Okay, let's jump to our Mars probe. All right, our Mars probe seems fine here, and we are entering Mars SOI. Our periapsis is 191 kilometers, which should be fine. That's out of the atmosphere. Let me try and get over to Mars focus view. All right. Hmm. Well, this inclination is not acceptable, so let's. That's not where I really wanted to maneuver. Ah, that's where it's going to give me the maneuver, though. All right. Okay, so theoretically, this is the maneuver, but if we do it right now, we should get a better deal. All right, we'll stop it there. Uh, 160 kilometer periapsis, 11.3 degrees off from, from Phobos. Let's just get rid of all other indications. Looks like our periapsis should be in the right place. So, let's see. Getting into a loose orbit takes about 2,500, let's say. And then it takes 300 more to get it to a Deimos sort of touch. So I'm just going to go ahead with the Deimos touch and shift it a little bit. 
Oh shoot, lost that. It doesn't like you moving the node around for some reason when you're hyperbolic. Right, so in one day and four hours we want to do this node and that'll be before the Nico 621 is ready. Well, something keeps pulling me out of time warp. Flight computer doing stuff. All these targeting things. Which were already successful, so I don't know why it's bothering. Okay, we need to make sure that communication is going to be alright at periapsis. It looks like it'll be tight. Yeah, we'll definitely be going into a blackout period, like, uh, if we don't start early. So we'll have to try and start early. Alright, uh, how long will this take? Oh, it's only a four minute stage now. High thrust to weight ratio, actually. Good deal. Then maybe we will end up in a loose orbit. But we do want to get as close to periapsis as possible. Engines seem fine. Let's avoid the wobble and go. Just try to make capture here. The atmosphere for Mars, by the way, starts at 125 kilometers. So we're 158 right now and decreasing. We've lost connection. We should still be able to shut down the engines at the right time, but that's about it. Not too sure about the very definite Mars horizon uh, atmosphere line. That seems weird. Let's review our contracts. We need to fly by Deimos and collect any science. Fly by Phobos, collect any science. Land on Deimos. And uh, they want the telemetry analysis there transmitted. And then uncrewed Mars landing. The first one we're going to try and do is the Mars landing unless there's a good encounter with Phobos and Deimos which is tough unlikely to be easy so probably we're gonna send in the Mars probe first which is this top one anyway you can tell it's got the parachute what it doesn't have is a heat shield we will need this to be overhead in order to communicate with it I'm gonna activate its antennae once remote tech allows me, of course. Oh, no connection, right. I thought it was just a signal delay, but no, it's no connection. Okay, we've captured. And we have our intended sort of pass. Okay. Let's see if we uh, plot something on the next go around. What happens? Well, that's obviously not the right time. How about the next time after that? There we go. So, this is what I was looking for. If we are going to be really, really good about this. There we go. Deimos encounter. Now once we fly by there, it's all up to the little lander to actually do the thing. And as you can see, we just lost it. And the number here is going all out of whack. So, yeah, it's not going to be very easy to plan here. 
Um, okay, this is going all all nuts. So maybe just don't use anything, please. I think it already messed it up somewhat. Yeah, there goes my cunning plan. Definitely messed it up. Okay, uh, there's my cunning plan again. So, we'll try and do that maneuver. It'll take 105 of our 254 meters per second. But we're going to be letting go of some probes in the meantime. Uh, we're going to let go of this probe right now. which is, And it, everything's floating around. Yeah. Um, let me add that alarm. A little bit worried about letting it go with all the communication situation, you know? No, I mean, there's no connection right now, so I'll wait. Let me wait until I can extend those antennae. Okay, that's done. And then in another 10 minutes or so, we'll be able to stage this, hopefully. Uh, but it's not letting me right-click on the decoupler, which is the safest way to do this. That's definitely not the right one, not the right one, that one. Okay, correct decoupler verified. This fuel will be unlocked. And... Okay, spacebar. It has to make its own way into the atmosphere of Mars, after all. Okay, that probably gave that a bit of a kick. Alright, that fuel is unlocked. This fuel is still locked. Oh, this ended up having the maneuver node? Shoot. Oh, my precious Deimos maneuver node is gone. Well, we'll get to it eventually. Let's do this first. This is the next thing. Jeez. This is on fine controls already. Gotta go to fifty kilometers. And then turn that off. So it'll spin, but I am going to check on the parachute info and then toggle it. Uh, oh, toggle info takes. Crud. Uh, toggle info takes a delay. Then I'm gonna arm it. Now we're running a little bit ahead of the other mission because our periapsis is lower, so we're faster, which is good because that'll give us time to slow down. Uh, but I'm going to retract. We're probably going to lose an antenna. Oh, can I retract the antenna, please? This is very important. Okay, well, uh, nope. Deactivate that. It should still have some range deactivated. Is that right? I don't know. I, uh, maybe not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order it to activate uh, after we hit the atmosphere, which means it'll activate once it gets down, right? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, because of the 10 minute delay thing. I'm also going to deactivate another one and stagger when I activate them if I can. While we're at it, we should do some of the science stuff. Just have that log temperature. Whenever it happens, it's fine. I sense that we're going to use a lot of fuel trying to hold retrograde with smart ASS doing this. So does the retracted antenna have a little bit of range? Not really. We really needed something with an omni range while retracted. That was a big mistake. Uh, 
We are now in the atmosphere of Mars. This could all blow up just because of heat. But we're only going 4,000 meters per second or so. Oh, I forgot to unlock this tank. Gotta do that. We have 968 meters per second altogether. If we go around for another pass, that's going to be a bit of a problem. There should be some drag on this thing, right? I haven't seen this landscape on Mars before. This must be new. For the time being, we still have communication. At this point, if it turns out that we're not on descent, I'll, I might try and force descent using the engine. I mean, if it, if we hit periapsis and our apoapsis isn't, like, negative. Wow, those thrusters. Smart ASS, honestly. Okay, we're going up again. Let me force it. Just gonna force it down. I want to reserve 400 meters per second to make a soft touchdown, but that's all I really need to reserve. Okay, well, we are negative. Um, that's quite a long time. But the drag should take care of the rest. I'm worried about how long we can stretch our communication line. Well, I think we're going to lose communication soon anyway. Even if we continue communicating with the Uber Prober orbiter, that orbiter is not going to have communication with Earth for very long. In a minute, uh, one of the other commutrons is going to deactivate, but I can't tell it to activate. Oh, shoot. I hope our antennae survive. Oh, well, we can do a temperature scan transmission if we actually add communication. But we were supposed to get the science on landing anyway. That would be nice science, though. You know, it occurs to me that where we're landing, we're probably never going to have communication, or it will be a very long time. We're running out of fuel with Smart ESS doing this thing. I'm going to let the probe orient itself however it likes. Keep in mind, the surface is not necessarily at zero, but it's about four kilometers right now, so not bad, but we'll keep that up. We'll have more data recorded, but not at the right timing. We'll just keep them. Transmit them some other time. Oh! Our drogue shoot snapped. But our main shoot holds. And... Wow! Oh, We were going pretty slowly, but wow, that all happened really fast, didn't it? I swear we were going in single digits meters per second, but I was also on... I was on physical time warp. I shouldn't have been on physical time warp. <sighs> okay, that was a bust. I don't suppose you count that as a landing. No, you didn't count that as a landing. Uh, catastrophic failure. Okay, well, let's go back to our our orbiter to do that part, or at least plot that part. The encounter with Deimos. On the bright side, Deimos doesn't have an atmosphere. And it's not going to be so tense because we'll be going fairly slowly around it, hopefully. And remember, there is another mission on the way, and lessons learned from this one can be applied to our next Mars mission, which is uh, only a short time away, right? How long? 
Oh, uh, a mere 146 days. Not, not quite so short, but still. Okay, that's the one. Part of a problem. Communication was a pain. Hopefully, I don't know if communication is going to be better or worse for the other mission. It could be worse. We're right on the line here. You know, periapsis is right where we lose communication with Earth. The next mission, it might be completely on the dark side. Okay, so plotting at periapsis for an attempt at Deimos. Only the only the lander is actually going to try and make orbit around Deimos. Looks like we have a periapsis there for 99 meters per second. Okay, well, we have that. Let's try and do it. Let's try and do it. I was thinking about leaving it as suspense or something, but we have, we have enough to be suspenseful about. Right now, we don't have any communication. Okay, let's try this. All right. How close are we right now? Well, it doesn't say. Okay, it looks like nine meters per second that away. Well, that maneuver node did not do what I expected it to do. I think it's just Kerbal being fidgety. Okay, we've got a Deimos periapsis. Let's go over there. We should have communication over there. Mars will not be blocking our way. It'd be sort of hilarious if Deimos ended up blocking our way. Okay, at this point it'll be prudent to prepare all the things. Oh shoot. Uh, no, no, I don't want RCS off. Just didn't want it firing right there. Okay, a decoupling has occurred. We are in control of this probe. It has its own internal, I forgot the probe core has its own internal communication, so that's good. But we'll get the commutrons as well. Apparently that kick from the decoupling did not throw it off from its Deimos encounter. Very good. Oh, we lost connection for a bit there. I don't know why. Okay, let me prepare some stuff. Let me activate this engine. And then once we get uh, to 10 minutes before the encounter, I'll have our instruments do their thing. Looks like we have like a minute to work with, I think. Encounter and then periapsis. Yeah, it looks like we have some time actually. That's nice. Nice to encounter Deimos with some time. Okay, here's the taking a look at our signal delay. All right, here's where I want to log stuff. Log magnetometer data. Log radiation data. Toggle log. Court impact data. Log temperature and log pressure. Not the goo though, the goo's for the surface. I have no idea whether we can make orbit or anything. I'm gonna unlock... Hmm. Yeah, I don't want SAS using a lot of it, but I'm gonna unlock the fuels now. We have 699 meters per second, so I don't know if that's enough to land. We're about to find out. Map is getting real tight here. Okay, we are in Deimos SOI. I'm just gonna burn orbit retrograde here. Seems like the thing to do. 
Close proximity to the craft scrambles some sensors. Okay, fine. Uh, transmit this data. Whatever it is. Uh, yep. Transmit that. Transmit that. Transmit that. It, yeah, transmit that. Really wish. Okay, I, I'll just I'll just do the RCS myself because SmartESS is doing a lot of it. So am I though. Hmm. I don't think we can actually safely land on Deimos. We're, uh, we're lacking about 60 meters per second. But can we get into orbit? Probably not. Because I, I think orbit's like walking speed around Deimos, so. Uh, well, we got the flyby. Hopefully. I mean. Okay, uh, fine, you can hold retrograde. Did we get the flyby? Yes, we performed the Davos flyby. Just not the landing. And we're out of fuel. Actually, 121 meters per second off. Well, we can do the goo container. Ah, uh, but the goo container will be out of Davos SOI, huh? Well... Uh, even even in Mars SOI, I'll probably be okay. Probably we haven't done that yet. We got some science, and we fulfilled the contract, but not quite as much as I wanted to do. Okay, well, there you have it, folks. Uh, one outright failure, one call it partial. Uh, Good thing we have a backup mission. Actually, this was the backup mission. It just arrived first. But there you are. So we will try We will try to hit Phobos with the orbiter again. And uh, focus on Phobos next time. I don't know if we can. It's possible we could hit Deimos again and try with the other, other lander. Try and use the other lander to land on Deimos. We'll think about it. And also we have the Nico 621 to do next time. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.